Hello there, middle school math teacher. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my three best and favorite test prep games to play with your middle school math students. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin, and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership. We are your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach middle school math. So if you are in the midst of test prep or really any time at all, but I love to play these games during test prep season. These are my three best and most favorite games that I love and that my students love. Okay, so let's dive right in. Game number one, I love the game Scoot. With Scoot, it is really best played with task cards if you have them, or you can use index cards. And all you do is you write one question per task card, or one question per index card. You put a question on every single table. Students will start at their one table, answer the question. I usually give a timer. I set a timer for about, depending on what we're doing, uh, anywhere between 30 seconds and a minute. So these, these questions aren't meant to be super complicated questions, okay? And let me just also interject here is, I don't believe that math should be based on time, okay? This is a game where they do have limited time to answer the question, but it is for fun, okay? So don't come at me and telling, you know, yelling at me that like we shouldn't be doing time things. I agree because I don't believe I don't believe in causing more stress for our students, but this is just a game, okay? So, give more time if you want or give less time if you need. But if I'm doing something like, if I'm playing Scoot with helping my students practice adding, subtracting integers, I'm probably just gonna give like 30 seconds, okay? And these questions, I don't usually play Scoot if, again, the question's a little bit more complicated and they need a little bit more time because that's not fair and I don't wanna promote stress. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, so I usually set a timer for about 30 minutes, or 30 minutes, 30 seconds to one minute, students have, their 30 seconds, let's just say, to answer the question. And then once the timer dings or buzzes or whatever sound you wanna use, they scoot to the next question. And then they do it again and they scoot to the next question, okay? This gets students up and moving. It gets them practicing what they need to practice. And it's actually really, really fun for them, okay? Game number two, this is called four choices. And what you do as a teacher, you will put on all four of your walls, a, B, C, and D. Or if you just have three choices, pick A, B, C, whatever you want to do. This is really great if you are using uh, previously released test questions. This is what I like to use it for. So instead of having my students, instead of me passing out a whole sheet of previously released test questions and students going through and like circling A, circling C, and just going through it and making it really boring, this is how I get students up and moving, thinking, and engaging. So I will put the test question up on my projector so students can see the question and all four answers, okay? So let's just say the question is, what is one plus one? keep it nice and simple for the sake of this video. What is one plus one? And the choices are A, A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, D, okay? One, two, three, four, okay? So students will go to the wall of their choice, okay? So if students think that the answer is one, they will go stand by letter A in your class. If they think the answer is two, they'll go stand by B in your class. If they think the answer to one plus one is three, they will go to C. And if they think it's four, they will go to D, okay? So you may or may not have students standing at all four of those choices. And what I like to do is I like to pick students who are standing at each of the choices or wherever they're standing, actually. I like to call in a couple of students and tell me or ask them, okay, Giovanni, tell me why you picked letter whatever, letter B. Okay, why do you think the answer to one plus one is B and number, you know, the answer is two. Why do you think the solution is number two? Or why do you think the solution is two? Then your student, Giovanni, has to tell you why, has to justify the answer. If 
you have students who believe that it is something else, they also have to justify the answer. Then you can ask your students, okay, if, if after hearing Giovanni's justification, if you want to move and change your answer, feel free to move and change your answer. So students, you know, have to think about what, think about their own thinking and think about what their peer has shared as well. You can do this with as many questions as you want. You can do this with as little questions as you want, but it really gets your students up and moving, thinking about their answer and having to explain their answer to you, which is awesome. The third and final game that I love so much, I am obsessed with it and I have a whole nother video that best describes it for you. So if you want to watch more in depthly of the explanation, click on the link below in this video, or I'll try to link it here or here. Um, and it is called grudge ball. I love this because it is really, really, really engaging. All you need is a Nerf ball and a Nerf basket. So I'm going to do my best to explain this really quickly. So if you want to wa watch my video again with more detail, use the link below in the description box and I have a video for you. So you will put on your whiteboard 10 X's. Okay. So just draw 10 X's for each team. These 10 X's represent their lives. I like to spit, split my class up depending on how many kids you have in your class. I like to split it up between three and five teams, anywhere between five and five to eight kids per team. So you ask each team a particular question. Okay, so again, let's just take the one plus one example. So you ask team one, okay, what is one plus one? I actually have, I like to use task cards with these. So I project the question up on the board so everyone can see and hear the question. If team A gets the correct answer, they tell me that the answer is two, then they get to come up and throw the ball into the Nerf basket. And if they make it into the Nerf basket, they get to take away a life from another team. The winner of the team, the winner of the game is the team with the most lives. Okay. If they miss the basket, that's okay. Nothing happens. Um, and we just move on to the next question. But since they got the question correct, they also get to remove a life from one of the teams. So they get to take a, take a life away if they get the question correct. And then they get to take a bonus life away if they shoot and make it into the nerf basket. Okay. The rules are you cannot commit suicide. You can't kill yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the winner is the person is the team that has the most lives in the end. My students beg me to play grudge ball pretty much every day. <laughs> they love this game. It's intense. It's fun. And again, they are practicing math in a way where they're not realizing the practicing math because they're having so much fun doing it. Again, if you want to check out a more in-depth explanation of how to play grudge ball, use the link below in the description box. I show you, um, I give you more, more details, uh, and an in-depth look on how to play this game. It is my number one favorite game that students beg to play. So those are my three games. Let me know in the comments below, which one you are going to play first. I can't wait to see which games your students are going to love. And until next time, bye for now.